traffic Welcome to my dreams, it's a madness Happy Monday friends, doing my morning housekeeping and check-in and today's a big day because our boy Luca Betzel just posted his first LinkedIn post. <laughs> this has been almost like a recurring joke and a long time in the making for our very own head of fulfillment to start posting himself. You might know Luca from previous vlogs, but now you will definitely know him from LinkedIn. Just went live an hour ago, an absolute banger. And yet another face who will represent the company, who will represent Notice on LinkedIn. So another big milestone towards really embracing the creator first company approach. We now have Max Rabmann, Luca Wetzel, Malis Zeiss, myself, Marvin Sanchez, Uma, sorry Uma, your last name is too difficult for me to say right now. <laughs> and then a couple of freelancers who also occasionally post about working with us. So we got five active faces um, on LinkedIn right now, all committing to at least one post per week and all of them receiving support from us by being almost like agency clients. So we are our own clients here. And the goal is just to spread the word, to build trust at scale and to diversify away from only my face on LinkedIn. By the way, I also had a banger post yesterday for LinkedIn standards at least. The headline reads, on LinkedIn, everybody glorifies the founder life. 13 things I've experienced that suck big time. So this is the hook. This was the pick. <laughs> this was from the Tour de Suisse after I crashed from drinking a protein shake. So I've been on LinkedIn for five years now and it's our number one growth driver and also the platform we start with when working with new personal branding clients. So yeah, that's fun. Very excited about having more people repping the brand to, on the one hand, just get more overall awareness and trust and diversify away from me, but also to just attract new team members, content strategists for the academy, and of course also get relevant deal flow in terms of B2B customers and leads. So that is that. Very nice start to the day. Got my coffee locked in, and now I'm gonna do a couple of small to-dos, and then prepare the leadership meeting. Monday means internal team meeting and checking in with the CFO, then have a lunch meeting with a B2B sales wizard and then the meeting marathon really starts. So that's it. That's the Monday. Very pumped for the week. And that's that. Back to work, friends. Back to work. Okay, that's great. Nice to meet you, bro. in eurem neuen Lieblingsmeeting. Um, das Growth Alignment Meeting vorbereitet wie kein anderes. Spaß. <lacht> Approach kann und liebe klären und Hi friends, so just had three sales calls, was solid, one of which turned into an immediate request for quotes and a closing call in two days from now. So that was great. And um, what is helping me here is the way I'm outlining our offers and the Notion page that I share with people that is very straightforward and covers a lot of different components that I'll happily share in a future video. But also the way we create scarcity, which is a truthful and honest way based on the capacity that we have inside of our company. So taking the cohort based approach of knowing how many project leads we currently have, how much capacity they have and what the next kickoff dates are that we can provide and offer to new clients and you know how many slots are available for those kickoff dates. And so in this case, he's going on vacation end of the week. So I told him, hey, if you're going to be back after vacation in two and a half weeks from now, then, you know, we can't give you the slot mid-September if we make the decision afterwards, which is completely fine, no rush, then we would probably start at the earliest date uh, in early October. I think we're probably gonna have one or two slots open there. But if we make a decision by end of this week, before you go on to vacation, then I can give you the last slot that starts mid-September. And this is no, so no fake scarcity or anything like that. It's actually rooted in the fact that we finally have clear capacity management and a very streamlined fulfillment process and the way through which we manage our project leads, 
aka content strategist. So that was great. Um, and now I'm going to prepare a quote and have the decision call on Thursday and see if we could close in before vacation, after vacation or at all. But it uh, seems very promising. And now it's time for a deep dive interview with a new client of ours. And I'll talk about what that is later, but this is going to be a two hour session. So give me energy. Usually these are the most energizing meetings though. So I'm excited. Um, but yeah, going to transition into deep dive interview now and interview this awesome new client of ours. All right, my friends, filming on the iPhone because the Osmo is full. All the SD cards are full and I'm now transferring the files to the SSD to free up space. But I wanted to fill you in on what happened for the past two hours, which was a deep dive interview with a new personal branding client of ours. So what I do with Notes is what we focus on is helping B2B founders and executives, or just, you know, dope entrepreneurs overall in building their personal brands by establishing a content process that revolves around hosting interviews and then turning those interviews into micro content that we publish across their relevant social channels. And so it's a boutique done for you service for these people. And we have two phases when we sign a new client. The first phase is the setup phase. It's a six week sprint. And I can go more into the details of how we structure the fulfillment process separately. Um, but that's the first step. And then after the setup sprint, after everything is ready to go live, so we you know, create their media strategy, we develop the content archetype and we revamp their LinkedIn profiles as well as produce the first batch of content so that we are one month ahead in terms of the content calendar with pre-approved content ghostwritten for the clients. We then transition into the retainer, the content engine process, you could say, with two content calls per month. Then we turn into LinkedIn posts, we post on their behalf, we do basic community management and we just run up their personal brands. And usually our clients don't have much content already. And so they're building it from the ground up with us. Sometimes some more, you know, established founder creators or content founders um, also work with us just to get more fuel out or just improve what they're already doing. Anyway, what we did just now is the deep dive interview. And that is one of the first long sessions that takes place in the setup process. So after the client signs a contract, they receive the onboarding email with an onboarding questionnaire, the first invoice. Then we have a kickoff meeting where we plan out the entire timeline. We realign on the goals. We present the project teams. And then we have the deep dive interview. And that is a two hour interview, a podcast with the clients where we just talk about their personality, their entrepreneurial path or their journey thus far their business case and their vision for the future and whatever subject matter specific questions we might have. And this is a foundational interview that helps us build rapport and an emotional connection, but also just gather a ton of golden stories and insights and nuggets into these individuals that we can then use for future content production. And yeah, we've done, I don't know how many interviews like deep dive interviews I've done by now. I think about 65 or so uh, of actual deep dives. Uh, I still do a lot of them myself just because I really enjoy learning about these people. It's selfishly speaking a way for me to learn from these folks to also, you know, nurture relationship. It gives them a feeling that I as the founder and CEO still hear them and am somewhat involved in the process, which I am. Um, and I'll explain how I'm getting myself out of the business while still making sure that I have an impact on these projects. Um, but yeah, we did that. It was a two hour session. It was a ton of fun. And on the call, we had myself as kind of the, the founder CEO doing the interview. We had Luca, the head of fulfillment, who oversees all of our project managers slash content strategists. And then we had the lead content strategist, Max Dixon, who actually will lead the project in the day to day. So that was it. It was awesome. It is 6, 15 PM. I have sun, the sun on my face and it's warm. I feel blessed and grateful to be working with these crazy people. This is a nine figure entrepreneur in the real estate industry. He owns hundreds of apartments in Germany and across Berlin. Um, and he has a bold vision for the future and wants to make living affordable for people. And he wants to focus on people, not on real estate investors when it comes to the future of construction. So ton of fun, energizing, despite going two hours without a break, my arm is hurting from holding the iPhone. I will, do some housekeeping stuff, hop on a call with Calvin, and then I'm hungry, might go for a run, but this is the Tuesday, guys. Cheers. And 
nice light morning run done. And friends, you don't need to do huge ass workouts in the morning, at least I don't think. Today I did a, let's see, I did a 3K, 15 minutes, broke a sweat, got the pulse up, and then grabbed a coffee on the way back and took the way back kind of as another opportunity to ground myself. Deep breaths, 5-5, five, five, you already know. You know, do a little gratefulness scripting, you know? I'm grateful for X, I'm grateful for Y, and everything will work itself out. And man, I feel amazing right now. So gonna hop into a cold shower and then start this Wednesday. Bro, check out our new office. Hi friends, getting out of deep work now. I just wrapped up about an hour and a half of sales process improvements because we so far have been generating all of our deals through fully inbound, so website demos booked, referrals and LinkedIn requests. So people sending us DMs and signal based outreach where people interact with my LinkedIn profile. I send them a DM, we start a convo, we book meetings. So we break it up into different levels. Level zero is when somebody just books a call through a calendar or website without us ever interacting directly with them. Level one is when somebody asks about our service, requests a service, and then we just get them over the edge of actually booking the call. Level two is kind of the signal-based outreach where we look for interactions, visits, connection requests on LinkedIn, for example. So if somebody visited my profile, if somebody sends me a connection request, we send them a DM to start a convo and eventually get them to book a call. So this is what we've been doing and this is what got us to write about, you know, 70 to 80K MRR, which is kind of the range that we're hovering around um, as of now. And now we wanna create more avenues for getting qualified people onto calls because that is one of the challenges of level one to two is that we can't control as much whether or not we're attracting the right people, whether or not we're attracting our ICP. And so what we are experimenting right now is cold-ish outreach slash just proactively reaching out to people and testing different value-based approaches to getting them onto calls. And so what I outlined right now is a sales process, a strategy um, that is predicated around Loom video recordings, personalized Looms for prospects. And that means that we go towards highly targeted prospects, ideally through referral partners or friends of ours that can make the intro or just, you know, our dream customers, our dream 100. And then we ask them, hey, ABC, do you want us to, you know, send you a video where we give you some feedback uh, or help you improve your strategy type beat? So I mapped that all out, used a lot of ChatGPT, previous experience, all of that, created an Ocean Doc, and now I have an SOP, a starting point that Salem and the sales team can start testing and playing with. Um, and much more to come. September will be the month where we do a full on deep dive on really mastering the art of B2B sales beyond you know what I've been doing so far and what has been working for me and our clients to just keep on learning and see you know, what tools can we use, how can we integrate more of AI into the outreach process without spamming people, but actually leveraging these tools to have an even even more personal approach towards sales. Um, and you know, the playbook is kind of written out in my mind that we will get into. So more on that in the future, but yeah. So for me, starting out in terms of sales, post on LinkedIn, connect with you know my dream clients through connection requests, get my first couple of case studies, get referrals, post, a lot, get a lot of traction, do the account routine. So, you know, message people who interact with my profile and my content. And that's what, you know, helped me build this seven figure agency. And I will keep on doing that and improving that. And we're also launching more personal brands from our team who can do the same as I've been doing. And we're adding this new layer. We call it the level three type of outreach um, that I just explained in terms of kind of the loom strategy as one idea. Anyway, that's that. Now I have a lunch meeting. So gonna head to lunch now, probably not gonna bring the camera and then back to the HQ thereafter. Looking forward to getting some fresh air, some sun and a light, healthy lunch. When you have an afternoon low, you just run up the tunes, baby.
Hey Google, volume 90%. Just built Spitzies your own on myself. Kind of too late for caffeine and fake sodas. There are some days where you just, just gotta do it anyway. So, gonna work for another hour or so. Get dinner, wrap up this Wednesday. And there's that. But sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do. You know, that little music, that little drink, just to keep you going, keep you refreshed. And actually, wanna work. I feel good energy wise. It's just so hot right now, like between 5 to 7 p.m., the sun just hits my home office and uh, it's like a sauna in here. So, anyway. We are of course wrapping up our lunch meeting with a crisp cold brew and I think it would be a crime not to introduce you to this guy over here because there's so many different ways that you can build a business you know we have the agency wave I myself am building an agency first as a cash flowing business you got the VC bootstrapped all these different angles startup bubbles whatever it might be. And I really like and find inspiration from how Clement goes about business, partnerships, building his team, building his ecosystem. I mean, he's fucking hosting a golf tournament and like a paddle tennis community event every week. So Clemens, I would love for you to just introduce yourself to our friends over here as to kind of what you did the past few years and what you're building now. So, so my name is Clemens, I'm Berlin based. And we right now have built a group, it's a, it's a company group, it's I'd say an agency group consisting of three companies. We will even launch a fourth one this year um, and we have different fields, you know, we are in the software industry, sport marketing, production and in the end, even though those, those areas are totally different, we all work together because within this group, our name is Next Group, we are a culture-led company, I would say, you know, like really bringing people together. We are a very young company working with the biggest brands and I think what really thrive makes us thrive is to prove people wrong but not in a negative way but also in a positive way young people being talented around here around the world um, working together on projects that seemed impossible working alone on your own being a freelancer for example and now f uniting forces all together working with brands like Adidas with the world championship working with the state of Germany you know we did do government projects and everything works around people in my opinion and we have a really close team culture and we also try to bring this to the outer community that we have ourselves through events through community things so we have built core collective for example that takes place every week in berlin where we just bring people together that play pedal because we love to play pedal as a team so we just try to open it to everybody else you know and now we are doing a golf tournament together with the bits and pretzels and fabian and i think all these things together combined into me being a person today doing only what I love every day I drank coffee I play pedal I will play golf later I think I have a pretty cool life but in the end we work, we work really hard but we work in stuff that comes with ease for us but also with like the greater vision of okay even though we are a young team and um, we have the chance to change a lot of things right now and the industry right now is perfect because all those old stigmas and especially in the software industry we see that that it's not of benefit to be in an industry for 10 years it's better if you've been in this industry since last year because then you're fresh you're quick you know all the new technologies to work and uh, work with and this is what makes us not better but like different to other companies but like being so different to others i think we found our sweet spot in really thriving all together that's Beautiful. what we're doing beautiful and one piece of advice one mistake you've made in the past for other entrepreneurs young founders advice is over delivering 
I think over delivering is the number one thing that gets you everywhere, you know. And I think everybody is starting always had to over deliver, do something for free for 10 bucks, whatever. And I think most people like stop to over deliver because they think it's under their like own value. And I think that what we are doing is still over delivering, over, over, over delivering. And in the end, our philosophy is value over price. And I think this is not only related to agency work or company work. I think it has to do with like life, you know, and whenever people pay a price, it can be time, resources, uh, network, for example, I always want to deliver a higher value for the other person. And this is our main, main, main thing that we are all living for. What's the biggest mistake? What's the biggest mistake is uh, rushing too much, you know, and thinking that even though we are really a homogenic group of people, that we do have different characters, you know, and I think everybody is a teacher for another person. For example, if somebody doesn't want to work too hard if one person doesn't want to join the sport group you know I think this person is a teacher for something else you know and very often it happens in like companies as I see it that people who are different are like just kicked out of the company and I don't think that this is the right way I think the right way is to see people as teachers to uh, reflect on your culture reflect on your company and uh, this also leads to the thing that I think we spend way too little time on building culture, actively building culture, actively engage people with each other. And this is something that we did in the past and I think I will never do enough of it. So this is the biggest mistake I still do ongoing. That's fucking awesome. That's beautiful. A big inspiration for me, especially because I told you there's a lot of like proven models and advice out there, but it feels like you're just building your own ecosystem your own way. And uh, it's reassuring to know that, you know, as long as you keep going and you have the right intentions, good values, good people, you can do it many different ways. Many different ways lead to Rome. So, cheers to that. Yes, thank you. And uh, yeah, where, like, do you, are you still vlogging, man? Are you still I'm, putting out I'm, YouTube I'm videos? I'm still or? vlogging. Two vlogs are in the pipeline right now, but Marvin's pace is just better right now. <laughs> so this is my inspiration when it comes to consistency in the content form of vlogging. Cheers to that. Well, yes. check out Clemens Kauschke. And uh, I got to head to the meeting marathon that starts now. So <laughs> thanks for the energizing talk. Okay. Hi friends, we wrapped up the meeting marathon and watered our plans in the process. I just want to give you a bullet point summary-ish of the calls I had and the topics I faced to give you an idea of what this life sometimes is about and to give you a warning of the challenges you might face. <laughs> So let's go through, through this, this agenda of today and then actually have to bounce real soon to get dinner with Johannes. But so first I had lunch with Clemens. That was great. Shout out Clemens. Then we had a fulfillment um, brainstorming session. That was awesome. We decided on or updated how we will think of our project team structure. Then I had a recruiting call with someone that was introduced to me by Mr. Max Rabmann and she was great. It was a great call and um, I'm glad he introduced her to me. And I will now hand her over to Malis and Luca to take her through kind of the, the recruiting process and actually figure out if we could hire her, bring her onto the team. Then one call was canceled. And then I had a call with someone from the team who kind of just <laughs> us over. <laughs> um, no one you saw in the videos. Um, someone I believe in wanted to start his own agency but then decided to join us and without going into too much detail but at least for four months now he's been lying to us about doing outreach for our agency posting case studies of our agency positioning himself on LinkedIn as part of our agency notice but turns out he actually was pitching people his own service and was trying to close clients without telling us. Um, and then I stumbled upon a website, which was a website that basically was just a copy of our service. And there was a video, a loom, where he pitched a service and he used me as a case study, me, his boss, like who was paying him a salary to work for us. <clears throat> And he was leaking DMs from my account. <laughs> he signed an NDA, by the way, and did sign contracts. He used our IP and our wording and our templates as part of his pitch. And he was doing it, promoting the exact same offer. 
that we offer. And so today I talked to him because I found out last weekend and I said, bro, let's hop on a call, please. Didn't say why or what. And I really believe in this kid. I always did. And initially I spent a lot of time managing him, working with him. But then I kind of, once I updated our leadership team, uh, you know, he came under different management. So I wasn't in touch with him as much anymore, but you know, that's that. And so I approached call with knowing all of these facts and honestly not, I just never had something like this happen. I mean, I got fucked over with the software last year and that's gonna be a story for a different day. Uh, so I got fucked over once real bad. And this is like the second time, I feel le way less emotional slash it's, it's doesn't have as much of a negative impact. But I still like, I did not know and I still don't really know how to deal with this. I don't wanna, I don't wanna start a lawsuit and like squeeze him or like make him suffer financially. But I don't really know how to handle it. And at the same time, I'm like, damn, such a potential. But he straight up lied to me because how I approached the call was checking in how it's been going, seeing what he tells me what he's been doing. Maybe he'll be like, yo, I gotta tell you, man. Like I've been trying to just copy your service and sell it myself, even though I'm repping your brand and posting your case studies. So I just wanted to see because I understand if somebody wants to start their own thing. Uh, and people have left the company to start their own agencies. That's just part of the game. What is important to me is that you address the elephant in the room as, it so as soon as it pops up and that you're fully transparent with me and you don't lie to me and you don't lie to anyone on the team. And so the first 15 minutes, he just straight up lied to me until I, I tried to confirm and really lead him to the moment where he actually tells me what he did, but he didn't until I brought it up and I told him, what about the website, man? What about the loom and all of that? And so I had to confront him at some point. It was, it was, it was intense, but I didn't really have time to process because I had exactly 30 minutes until the next meeting started. So I context switched immediately and I don't really yet know what to do with this kid, bro. <laughs> should have just talked to me as soon as you got this idea, man, instead of just Anyway, so that's that. And I'm, then after that, I hopped on a call with a client of ours who's starting a new business, <laughs> straight from there. Then I hopped on a call with another potential client in Switzerland. And then I hopped on a discovery call through a referral with a guy in the US. Then I quickly caught up with Calvin, who is making an introduction with a potential client for us. And now I'm headed to dinner and sharing this reflection with you to show you <laughs> <laughs> the things they don't prepare you for. But my key takeaway is to make sure we're protected and we deal with these challenges moving forward, we prepare ourselves for these kind of challenges moving forward. Um, but yeah, this shit, you know, can't happen. And in this case, it was someone who was detached from the team, working in a different continent, different time zone, not participating in, in kind of any of our recurring meetings, but still, you know, on payroll and still part of the team, just kind of living somewhere else for the time being. And yeah, anyway, not gonna go into the details. So yeah, that's that. Felt like sharing it. That's Thursday. Gonna head to Johannes' place now, get dinner, chill for a bit, then get a good night's sleep. And then we're gonna crush tomorrow, Friday, another full day, but it's gonna be good. Friends, if anything, protect your integrity, stay true to your core values, play positive some games, and just address the elephants in the room, speak your truth. Ciao, all right, bye. And this <laughs> little add-on makes you appreciate the core team, the people you can trust and are doing stuff with even more so. And <laughs> right after I had the meeting, um, I get this message from Luca, check it out. Bro, you ain't got no clue. This shit is going to be absolute fucking fire in two months. Our lives are going to be so good. Das ist Spaß, Baby Shit.
What do you do, vlog? What do you do, what do you do? Welcome, welcome. Welcome to this beautiful spree with my boy Marvin. And uh, we're enjoying the sun out here. Sure. 